Hello everyone, we hope you're well and ready for our new topic of the day on the ATEC channel. Today we're going to look at ships. Many of the products we use every day are transported by ships. Products ranging from shampoo to appliances to even aircraft engines and food. The way things are transported depends on their nature. Thus, different types of ships can be made available for transportation of these products. Most of the ships are used to transport goods, but others, like cruise ships or ferries, carry passengers. Among the best known vessels are bulk carriers, multi-purpose vessels, container ships, and tankers. Other types of specialized vessels include salvage vessels, tugs, and barges. There are also cruise ships and ferries that carry passengers. But how can these huge ships weather storms, cyclones, and rough seas without sinking? If you want to know why not, we can explain in this video. Marine meteorology is a speciality of weather conditions that affect the oceans. Factors influencing these conditions include wind, swells, atmospheric and water temperature, and tidal flow. This practice is an important part of the routing in marine and air navigation. It is divided into two parts. There's coastal meteorology and offshore meteorology. Marine meteorology plays a major role in the safety and support of the ship. Therefore, its objective is to ensure the safety of the personnel, ships, and their contents. To do this, the National Meteorologist Service requires observation data from ships, buoys, weather satellites, and aircraft flying over the ocean. This information is added to the data collected by the meteorologists on land. They issue forecast bulletins and warnings. With the advancement of technology, fixed adrifting buoys are equipped with automatic measuring devices. Since 1960, meteorology satellites have been orbit in Earth. They allow the collection of information in areas not accessible to humans. All these remote observations systematically show more relevance than human observation. In addition, the information is in the form of code digital messages, which is easier to analyze. Once ships get wind of this information, they can simply avoid difficult situations. Cyclones, storms, or stormy seas, they can all be tracked with the advanced technologies now available. But there are also other reasons why these huge ships hold up so well at sea. To understand why ships float other objects sink, you must first take the time to understand the concept of object density. To do this, we need to review the concepts of weight and volume. And for that, we need to thank Archimedes first of all. Archimedes Socrates was a Greek philosopher. He lived his life in Sicily. He studied the behavior of liquids for a long time, in particular water. His first observation was quite unexpected. Indeed, it happened while he was taking a bath in his tub. He noticed that the deeper he went in the water, the more it increased. He finally decided that the volume of an object immersed in the water displaces the equal volume of the water. Archimedes thus theorized the notion of the volume of an object. How does the principle apply to ships? Indeed, there are huge steel constructions that can weigh hundreds of thousands of tons. And on top of that, the weather plays spoil sport. How can this stability be explained? Everything happens inside the ship. It's the shape of the interior that helps keep the ship afloat in the stable and bad weather. A ship isn't just made of steel, in fact it is a hollow steel box of all sorts of components. The engine, fuel, and cargo house it inside. But most importantly, there is an air that plays a big role in keeping the ship afloat. The density of the air inside the ship is much lower than that of water. This is what allows it to float. The average density of the entire volume of the ship and everything in it, include the air, must be less than the density of the same volume of water. The closer the density the entire vessel is to the density of the same amount of water, the greater the underwater surface area of the vessel. If the average density exceeds the density of water, the vessel will sink below the surface. However, vessels do not always float in the same direction. The volume of an object, that is, the space it occupies, also plays a role. This is why ships have such unique shapes. If all the steel in the boat were concentrated in a compact ball, it would sink instantly. But if that mass is well distributed over a large area, it's another matter. If the construction allows it to hold a lot of air, even a boat weighed several thousands of tons will float. Ships sink very little in water when unloaded, and as its weight increases, it sinks more and more. Then the underwater part of the boat becomes bigger and bigger. Therefore, the buoyancy increases. Thus, it remains equal to the weight of the ship. However, to ensure the vertical balance, the boat's floors must be lightened. To lower the ship's center of gravity, the bog is ballast. Ballast is used on the ships to provide temporary safety outside the ship. Vessels with enough weight will stay or tip over in strong winds. If the incline is too steep, the ship will sink. Today, sail ballasts are not really used for large ships. Ballast water technology allows ships to put water in a large tank. This is done to compensate for changes in the cargo or weather conditions. The capacity of the ballast water tank can reach millions of gallons for large ships. 
This allows the ships to support light or heavy weights while maintaining optimal handling conditions. Vessels can lower their tanks forward only to lower the entire ballast tank to travel shallows or to raise the bow to open water. Physical equipment includes raw water equipment, small and large water filters, pumps, and distribution lines. But it also includes ballast water pumps, treatment systems, and all the valves, sensors, and controls needed to work on the equipment. It is very difficult for a captain to stay on course and remain calm during a storm. There are good reasons to know the height of the waves and to face difficult situations. Can you put yourself in the shoes of a captain during a storm? Your first thought is that you can trust the ship and its crew. Once you've gotten through the first big wave, you understand the storm will not stop. Therefore, you need to know how to control the energy between the crew so that you can fight to the end. In the best case scenario, you do everything that avoid the storms. Indeed, even if the crew is trained to face the worst moment, the best decisions is to go around the bad weather, being sure that the ship is not in an area where it is likely to run aground on Paramount. Then, knowing through technical measurements where the least dangerous part of the storm is. Meanwhile, the crew must maneuver the best way they can to keep the ship's nose forward. The ship must always go forward in this way so that it can hit the waves at the best angle. This is important to avoid damage of the boat. Do you think that you could have steered the ship safely through a storm? Tell us in the comments. With that thought, we've come to the end of our video. If you enjoyed the topic of the day, feel free to like this video. If you want to enjoy more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave us a little suggestion for the future topics and activate the notification bell to be one of the first to see our next video. We'll see you soon on ATEC.